Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Making news overnight, a local man killed in a rollover crash on the west side overnight. Details just ahead. Plus the tragic death of a youth hockey player in Connecticut, raising new questions about safety equipment on the ice. And outside with live camera. Yeah, Mike was right. It didn't warm up much at all yesterday. Stayed very uh, chilly out there. We're in the mid 40s here in San Antonio this morning. Good morning, everybody. We've made it to Wednesday. It is January 12th. Thanks for joining us. Hope you're having a great week so far. The mornings have been cold and I'm looking forward to maybe not as cold in the afternoon. Well, it'd be nice to see some sun, right? Mm -hmm. I think so. Yeah, Mike's here with more on that. Mike, and he agrees. Both. Both. Yes. Good. Won't be as cold and we will see some sunshine. So it'll be tough to get rid of the clouds this morning. Uh, maybe by early afternoon, we'll start to see a lot more sunshine. But yeah, only upper 40s yesterday. Mm -hmm. And it was that almost kind of a dampish chill out there. We had a little bit of rain, obviously, in the morning and some of that uh, mixed stuff uh, further up to the north. Uh, this morning, we are starting off lots of clouds. And yes, it is chilly, not as cool as yesterday. 46 degrees. Once again, clouds have acted like a, a bit of a blanket on top of us. A couple of 30s out there in portions of the hill country. Stinson is at 50. Mountain Cedar and Mold both did uh, drop down from their previous day's reading yesterday. And uh, throughout the rest of today, definitely grab a jacket. It is is chilly and that's going to stay that way every morning this week, even though we'll get even warmer the next couple of days in the afternoons. This afternoon, we are going to make it up to 63 degrees. That is a normal high temperature, just a slightly above normal this morning. So this is what you would expect on the, uh, the 12th of January. Mostly sunny skies, plenty of sunshine really now through the weekend. We will have another front moving on through here. And when does that arrive? Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Thank you, Mike. And you this morning, San Antonio police say a man was killed in a crash on the city's west side early this morning. Happened at the 3500 block of Wiseman just after midnight. SAPD says a man was driving too fast when he lost control of his vehicle, crashed into a tree, and then rolled several times. Police say the driver was ejected and as a result was pronounced dead at the scene. SAPD now investigating how he lost control. There are no reports of other vehicles involved. In your morning headlines, North Korea says it successfully test fired a hypersonic missile. The announcement made on North Korean state media, which also reported that Kim Jong Un attended the launch. South Korean authorities say the missile covered 435 miles and landed in the ocean between the Korean Peninsula and Japan. Those authorities also say the missile is more advanced than the one North Korea tested last week, reaching more than 10 times the speed of sound. But experts doubt the missile was hypersonic. South Korean and U.S. intelligence authorities now taking a closer look to analyze that projectile. A pretrial hearing was held Tuesday for three former Minneapolis police officers who were on the scene of George Floyd's death. The officers were indicted last year and are accused of depriving Floyd of his rights while acting under government authority. Jury selection for their trial is scheduled to start on January 20th. Floyd died in May of 2020 after then officer Derek Chauvin held his knee on Floyd's neck for several minutes. Chauvin was found guilty of murder and is serving a 22 and a half year prison sentence. Some legal analysts expect the three officers will try to play all of the blame of Floyd's death on Chauvin. U.S. antitrust officials can continue their effort to break up Meta, the parent company of Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp. Federal prosecutors say that Meta has illegally become a monopoly in the social media market and that Instagram and WhatsApp should be spun off. On Tuesday, a federal judge rejected Meta's request to dismiss the Federal Trade Commission's complaint. It is a huge blow to the social media giant that could potentially end some of Meta's most valuable assets or lead to them being sold off. In a statement, Meta said it was confident the evidence will reveal the fundamental weakness of the claims. The FTC did not immediately respond to a requ request for a comment. Now the tragic death of a youth hockey player, raising new questions about safety on the ice. Some of the players' teammates are now demanding change. ABC's Andrea Fujii has the story. This morning, a new push to protect hockey players after the tragic death of a Connecticut teenager. Neck guards like these are selling out after Teddy Balkand, a 10th grader, died last week. He fell during a junior varsity game, and a player from the opposing team was unable to stop in time, slashing Teddy's neck with his skate. He always put others before him. Now, Teddy's friend has started an online petition for USA Hockey to require neck laceration protection. I'm not saying a neck guard would have saved his life. It just 
it feels like it could have been an avoidable accident. Some leagues require net guards, but others, including the one Teddy played in, only suggest players wear them. My nine-year-old started wearing one this weekend, for sure. He's fighting me on it, but uh, yeah, he, he started wearing it. Many coaches acknowledge injuries like the one Teddy suffered are extremely rare, but welcome the safety precautions. If they are uncomfortable or, or not convenient for players to wear, how can we redesign them so that, you know, they're more likely to be worn. As Teddy's team mourns his loss, they're paying tribute to their friend. But Teddy, you forgot. Okay. All kids go out and go for the game they play hockey with one And players from across the country are now leaving their equipment outside as the hashtag sticks out for Teddy gains momentum. More than 58,000 people have already signed the Change.org petition to require neck laceration protection. Andrea Fuji, ABC News, New York. 436, about 45 degrees. And still ahead, we're taking a look at the best products designed to reduce your stress level. And next, San Antonio Spurs hoping a long time at home at, can get them back on track. We'll take a look at their schedule, including tonight's game against the Houston Rockets. Certainly hope so. Me too. Quick look out at the roads with Transguide. Looking out there at I-10 and De Zavala and I-10 at Frio, things are looking pretty quiet this morning. And don't let your kids fight you on this, argue. Uh, they definitely need the code again this morning. We're just getting started here on GMSA. We are back after this. Welcome back, 439. Our San Antonio Spurs have come home following their worst road trip of the season, going just one and six on their second longest road trip of the year, second only to the rodeo road trip coming up next month. The lone victory was on January 5th of the Celtics in Boston, 99-97, and DeJounte Murray's first game back after being sidelined five games in the NBA's health and safety protocols. Spurs wanted to manage his minutes but could not afford to as he scored 22 points in 33 minutes, including a last-second defensive stand to prevent Boston from tying the game. There's no question that Murray belongs to to be an NBA All-Star this season. But following the 111-96 loss to the Knicks in New York, Spurs are on pace to win just 30 games this season. He's had an All-Star year. It's just that, you know, if your team doesn't have a, a good record, it works against you. And there are a lot of good point guards in the West. So uh, what he's concerned with is steady improvement, which he's done both, you know, technically on the court and leadership wise, he's been great. You know, I, there was no way I could keep him off the court tonight. You know, I don't know, we've been on the road, I don't even know, 13 days, 12 days, something like that. And this was five and seven nights and he wouldn't even think about it. You know, he wanted to, he wanted to play. That's just who he is. Tonight's game against the Rockets set for 7.30 at the AT&T Center. Then Cleveland comes to town Friday, followed by the Clippers on Saturday and Phoenix on Monday. Spurs will be home the next week as well. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Dallas Cowboys preparing to host the Niners to kick off the NFL playoffs, where the Cowboys will be only three-point favorites against the six-seeded team. Since opening in May of 09, the Cowboys AT&T Stadium hosted four playoff games with the largest attendance, announced at over 94,000. That was for Seattle back in 2018. But keep in mind, with standing room only, the stadium has a capacity of over 105,000 which they hit in the home opener for the 2009 season against the Giants. That's more like what Cowboys owner Jerry Jones wants to see when he was asked about it on his weekly radio show up in Dallas. It'll be Cowboys home game. There's no question about it. Home playoff game. And it'll be roaring. When that, when that bunch uh, cranks up and when you have 90-something thousand people, uh, I was trying to look at it. You know, we have to limit what we can put on our... Uh, standing room only out there. We have to limit that amount, but uh, I'd like to push that 100,000 this week. Kickoff between the Cowboys and Niners is set for 3.30 Sunday afternoon. No, a lot of people will be watching that. Oh, yeah? We're going to watch too. <laughs> Time now, 4.42 and 45 degrees for now. Coming up, we take a look at some of the new ways you can de-stress a little while at home or even on the go. And next, a medevac helicopter that crashed while transporting a baby to a Pennsylvania hospital still manages to make a miraculous crash landing. 
And welcome back. It's 444. An infant and three crew members survived a medical helicopter crash into a Pennsylvania neighborhood. ABC's Gio Benitez has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, miracle survival story. The noise was so loud, I actually thought maybe it was a bomb. A medical helicopter narrowly missing a church. The hero pilot pulling off the seemingly impossible. The pilot's possibly unconscious. Just caution, but they're still working. An infant and three crew members pulled from the wreckage, incredibly with no life-threatening injuries. The LifeNet medical flight carrying that two-month-old to a local children's hospital. Witnesses say the helicopter appeared to be in distress and flying low before hitting the ground and toppling on its side. The pilot managing to navigate power lines and buildings, crash landing the helicopter safely without hurting anyone on the ground. And we will be live from the scene with the very latest coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Gio Benitez, ABC News, New York. Well, it may be an understatement to say this, but the past two years have been stressful for a lot of people from the pandemic to politics to other things going on in our lives. And it can take a toll on our mental and physical health. So 12 on your side's Marilyn Morris has a look at some products designed to help bring the stress down. Worried and stressed out? You're hardly alone. 42% of people surveyed by Consumer Reports say they're experiencing more anxiety than they did before the pandemic. Stress can cause difficulty sleeping, shortness of breath, and even chest pain. What can help is self-care, and some products might too. Like a weighted blanket, it's filled with tiny glass or plastic beads. Several studies suggest weighted blankets can help ease anxiety and reduce insomnia and fatigue in some people. What the heavy blanket does is it causes a relaxation of the muscles and it puts you sort of in that relaxed phase. If you want to try one, experts say look for one that's about 10% of your body weight. So if you weigh 150 pounds, you need a 15 pound blanket. The YNM weighted blanket is about $60. Add a meditation app like Calm, Pieces, or Headspace, and you might get the best night's sleep you've had in years. Stress, have your muscles sore and stiff? Maybe you've seen those massage guns advertised on social media. Some people use them as a warm-up device before exercise or after a workout to help reduce soreness. They're also a way to stimulate muscles that feel stiff after sitting all day long. CR recommends the $100 Renfo RC massage gun. A more affordable option is foam rollers you can put beneath you and then roll on for relief. And don't forget the greenery. Sales of houseplants are actually booming. Well, it's debatable how well they actually clean the air. Studies show they are nature's little mood boosters. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. 47, let's go outside and check on traffic or lack thereof. Yeah, we've got a few cars out there, quite a few at 281 and Hildebrand, a big rig going by. Highway 90 at 36th Street. We've got traffic, particularly on that other side of the highway and the interchange there at 281 and 410 looking pretty good. Wow, people traveling on Highway 90 this morning. Mm hmm. Not surprised out there by the base and stuff. That's true. Day's They're pretty up early. busy. Yeah. Michael, good morning. Good morning. What good morning. Savon sent you? It's one of the pictures a lot of folks have sent in. Some folks had a little bit of that uh, sleep mixed in yesterday. We had that, uh, you know, it, it was rain being detected. A lot of it had evaporated before it reached the ground, but then there was that little cold pocket of air, and that decided to uh, freeze those raindrops up, and that's why we did get some sleet. A lot of folks said hail. No, this was sleet. Hail is associated with uh, severe thunderstorms, different uh, different cause of what uh, creates the two different uh, phenomenon, if you will. All right, lots of clouds hanging around this morning. They are going to be kind of stubborn. We'll keep them around at least through noon, maybe even early afternoon. Then we'll start to see more sunshine. 46 right now, so we are about 5 degrees above normal. 40s in the hill country. Uh, a couple of 30s there. 50 right now at Stinson. And not much of a breeze, but still it is definitely chilly. So grab a jacket. So obviously we don't have any wind chills to deal with. Dew point temperatures remain very, very low around here. And that despite the fact that they have come up pretty good chunk, a good five to 10 degrees or more compared to this time yesterday. So a little bit more moisture in the air, but it's not as though we're going to be seeing this huge return, this huge surge of moisture coming back on in here, which is kind of a 
good news, bad news thing. So as we warm up the next couple of days, actually starting today, we're not going to have just oppressively humid conditions. But then again, there's not going to be enough moisture when we get the next front moving through here to give us any rain. Here's the uh, satellite radar imagery going back uh, 12 hours. And as you can see, we got plenty of clouds hanging around here. And they're, like I said, going to be sticking around. Now, a lot of computer models do have things starting to clear out. I think we still keep some high clouds around, but the majority will be getting on out of here and we'll have more sunshine later on today. Again, a few high clouds hanging around here. Clear skies tonight. Going to be a chilly morning tomorrow. Then a nice big warm up and that's going to be over the next couple of days. But again, talking about those dew points, even though they will be staying in the upper 30s, then I mean, that's that's not bad at all. Then we get the front moving on through here and that's going to knock any sort of re humidity return out of here and it's going to be a very, very dry weekend and that's going to set us up for some more freezing temperatures. It looks like by probably Sunday morning and then also Monday morning. 57 degrees today at noon, still mostly cloudy skies and we will begin to see the clearing from west to east and then more sunshine later on today. We make it up to 63 normal high temperature and then add about 10 degrees to that tomorrow up to 73. Same thing on Friday, still chilly mornings with that dry air, but you know, good testament to that is the fact that we warm up about 30 degrees or more both tomorrow as well as Friday. Front comes through in the overnight hours and temperatures won't warm up all that much, only up to about the upper 50s. Plenty of sunshine, windy on Saturday. And yeah, lots of sunshine in the forecast. A couple of more freezing temperatures. No rain. Yeah. Mm, well, this yeah. is looking like a much brighter situation. There were several points yesterday after living on the East Coast for a number of years. I was walking around here thinking it almost feels like it could snow. You know, it's funny when I was letting the dog in late yesterday afternoon and it was like, yeah, a little, there's <laughs> a little something in the air like it, mm -hmm. you know, but maybe close, no, but just a little sleep in places. That was it. Yep. All right. Brighter days ahead and hopefully warmer 451 about 45 degrees and coming up next. Several shows are finally debuting on streaming services. Plus the Oscars get a host for the first time since 2018. Here are your lottery numbers. Pick three, one, seven, two, fireball, six, your daily four numbers, zero, two, zero, four, blank. <laughs> I'm not sure what that was supposed to be. Yeah, I don't know either, so I'm not going to guess. <laughs> 1, 8, 19, 20, 28 for your <laughs> cash five. And your Mega Millions, 2, 3, 19, 52, 58, Mega Ball 16, Mega Flyer 2. Good luck. Marvel's Eternals is now on Disney Plus, and the Oscars finally have a host again. For our latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. We only compete once for two minutes and 15 seconds in Daytona. That may be your last time in your career. Remember way back to the winter of 2020 before the pandemic when Cheer on Netflix was a surprise hit? I'm here to cheer for Monica. That's where season two of the docuseries picks up, says show creator and director Greg Whiteley. I don't think any of us would have predicted the show being as popular as it was. And so when we begin filming season two, you have a team that's writing this fame. Season two covers the fame, the pandemic, the sex abuse charges against star Jerry Harris, all of it. And it's out today on Netflix. Also new streaming today, director Chloe Zhao's Marvel movie Eternals finally makes its way to the small screens after premiering in theaters last November. Starring Angelina Jolie, Salma Hayek, Gemma Chan, and more, Eternals is now on Disney+. Plus. For the first time since 2018, the Oscars will have a host. ABC says this year's show will feature a master of ceremonies. The last three shows went hostless. Jimmy Kimmel was the last Oscars host. No word so far who will front this year's show, March 27th on ABC. And happy birthday to Issa Rae. The creator of HBO's Insecure is 37 today, while Spice Girl Mel C is 48. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Athenson, ABC News, Los Angeles. Hey, Mike, is it you? You're hosting the Oscars and you haven't told no. us yet? No. Would no. you tell us? Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> so he might. <laughs> right now it's 456, about 45 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, the head of the FDA now warning that most people will get COVID-19 at some point. How nation's top health officials are responding. Roku making it a little easier for you to access live programming. Details coming up in Tech Bytes. A quick look at the roads with TransGuide, very empty there at Loop 1604 in Wiseman. Uh, also, Loop 410 at Jackson Keller. We're going to be checking in with Stephen Cavazos very shortly.
Live from KSAT 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Two children were found abused and in deplorable condition, and police say the woman involved is behind bars this morning. Details coming up next. New CDC data shows the unvaccinated are 17 times more likely to be hospitalized for COVID. I'm ABC's Faith Abube in Washington. The latest from health officials coming up. And outside with live cam, yes, grab a jacket again. No big shocker there. Uh, we did have some wintry mix in the area yesterday. More on tap today, or do we finally warm up? That is a question we will pose to Mike coming up in a moment. Good morning, everybody. It is Wednesday. That is January 12th. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Hope you're having a great week. I'm looking forward to that sunshine. When can we see that, Mike? Uh, starting by the afternoon hours. The clouds are going to be hanging in here fairly stubborn, but will begin to clear out from west to east. And it's going to begin uh, early afternoon. We'll have a lot more sunshine later on today. And yes, that will help to warm things up because the cloud cover kept us only in the upper 40s yesterday. It was, yeah, it was cold. We're in the mid 40s right now. No breeze out there, but we do have that cloud cover. Still, the uh, the bottom number dew points are, are very low, so we're not having to deal with any fog or anything like that. We make it up to 63 later on today. That's roughly well, that is the normal high temperature this time of year, the average high and the aquifer yesterday. By the way, we did get one one hundredth of an inch of rain officially out there at the airport. No change in the aquifer yesterday and allergens. Both mountain cedar and mold dropped down from the previous day's readings. As far as cloud cover, we've still got a lot of moisture uh, aloft in the atmosphere in the mid and upper levels. This is what the water vapor imagery looks like right now. And so that usually translates into some some uh, mid and high level clouds. There is some clearing way, way off to the west, and I think we'll eventually see that. And we'll have some clear skies tonight, but uh, yeah, this will keep some some of those clouds around and help to keep the clouds around through the rest of the morning. So cloudy, chilly this morning. Grab a jacket and really you're going to need it. Even though we have this warm up coming about, it's not as though the humidity is going to be coming back on in here by leaps and bounds. So we'll have cool mornings and then warm afternoons. Jacket in the morning, kids. No jack in the afternoon. Sunshine, low 60s today, but then we have sunshine and 70s tomorrow. Again, low humidity. Now, Friday night, late to early Saturday morning. Now the front's going to move on through here. We'll have uh, mostly sunny skies, a couple of extra clouds around here, and it is going to be colder this weekend. It'll knock high temperatures back down, probably only the upper 50s on Saturday, a little bit warm on Sunday, but we are looking at a couple of more freezes around here. We'll talk more about that in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, good morning, sir. What's up? Not a whole lot, Mike. Good morning. Right now, the roads, as expected, are very quiet right now. Let's take a quick look around town, see how things have been shaping up as we get this Wednesday morning going here. US 90 at 36. Uh, not a lot of people out there. It's very early on. You can see here 281 at loop 410. Very quiet in a lot of these shots, almost too quiet, but I'm not complaining. When we have situations like this, obviously, it makes for a very easy morning commute. You can see I-10 at De Zavala, very empty corridor there. Just one or two folks out there they're getting their morning started early with us. Hopefully uh, going to grab a cup of coffee as they get the day going. But right now, as you can take a look at the map, it's basically what we've been seeing on these trans guide shots. Not a whole lot of activity out there. Very quiet morning. We're not seeing any slowdowns or congestions just yet that would impact your morning drive time. But if your travels so happen to take you through San Antonio from any of these neighboring communities, the good news is the trend is that it is green across the board. You can see if you're coming in from I-10 and Bernie and those eastbound lanes, 25 minutes at this hour, 20 six if you're coming in from 281 southbound and Bulverde and 25 on 35 southbound coming from New Braunfels. So right now we are in good shape and if it stays as quiet, we have some construction spots to talk up. Some spots are wrapping up. Other spots are going to be kicking into high gear this weekend. We'll have more of that coming up in the next few minutes. Mark Stephanie. Stephen, thank you. This morning, a welfare check at a home on the city southeast side leads San Antonio police to a gruesome discovery. Two children alone and abused. We know a woman in her 30s involved in this case is behind bars this morning. Our Jonathan Cotto joins us live. And good morning, Jonathan. Can you give us an update? Good morning, Stephanie. Well, this is certainly a case that has outraged the community. We know that woman is denying the charges. She was taken into custody on two counts of endangering a child. 37-year-old Priscilla Salais was arrested by SAPD after two children in her care were found not only alone, but with visible signs of abuse Sunday afternoon. 
San Antonio police responded to the home on the city's southeast side and made the alarming discovery at a duplex located on Bailey Avenue near Rigsby after receiving a call from a witness. Now, police say they were able to force their way inside of a bedroom and found a one-year-old baby girl hogtied with a bloody lip and blackened eye. A two-year-old boy barricaded inside a playpen and police say both children were heavily soiled. Now, we've been told Salisa's stepdaughter, Isabella, entrusted her to care after the kids after they were taken from her by Child Protective Services this morning. Their mom has a message for them. Tell them that I'm sorry. I'm sorry that it got this far and that I should have never trusted anybody with them. And that I just want them to come home already. Now the children remain in foster care this morning. We're told by a CPS representative that Salais was not a licensed foster care parent in the state of Texas. Right now, there's still a question as to how the children were handed over to Salais' care. We'll be following this case closely and update you as more information is made available. Reporting Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Catalytic converter thieves hit the biggest school district in San Antonio, getting away with thousands of dollars worth of parts. This happening on um, one of the Northside ISD's bus bars. Sarah Costa joins us in the studio to explain. Good morning. Good morning, Mark and Steph. And San Antonio police say converter thieves have been a problem for some time in the city now. And now Northside ISD is scrambling to make plans for today's bus routes. It happened yesterday at the North Transportation Station on Hausman. The district says thieves stole catalytic converters from 16 of their mini buses. The theft means multiple bus routes were initially delayed yesterday. The district says now they have other vehicles designated to run the routes for the time being. Police have said thieves targeted the parts to sell the precious metals inside the converters. The thefts are going to cost the district around $24,000 in repairs. Mark and Steph. Thank you. Governors in multiple states issuing emergency declarations. The Omicron variant depletes vital health care resources. The CDC says the variant now makes up 98% of all new cases. ABC's Faith Abube is in Washington with the latest. A six-fold increase in U.S. COVID cases in just the last month, driven by the Omicron variant means across the country, hospital beds are at a premium. We're starting to treat patients in hallway beds. In Minnesota, an urgent situation inside the Mercy Hospital emergency room. The healthcare system is absolutely buckling right now. Virginia issuing a 30-day state of emergency to help healthcare facilities increase bed space and staff. New Jersey and D.C. also under emergency orders. Maryland, Maine and Massachusetts all leaning on the National Guard as a record number of COVID patients flood U.S. hospitals. Even though they say Omicron is probably more mild. Uh, I don't think we're necessarily seeing that with the unvaccinated. New data from the CDC shows the unvaccinated are bearing the brunt of the virus, 17 times more likely to be hospitalized and 20 times more likely to die from COVID. This is an extraordinary virus, the likes of which we have not seen even close to in well over 100 years. It is a very wily virus. It has fooled everybody all the time. Across the country, Americans desperately trying to find COVID tests, some forming long lines in frigid temperatures. Hundreds waiting for hours in Northern California, only to be turned away due to a system outage. But this morning, as the Omicron wave sweeps across the nation, glimmers of hope in New York. For the first time in weeks, the number of new COVID cases in the state is dropping. Looks like we might be cresting over that peak. Continuing, there's the cases are slowing down. And as for those at home COVID tests, the Biden administration promised officials say the first round will start going out at the end of the month with the remaining tests going out over the next 60 days. In Washington, Faith Abube, ABC News. The number of local COVID-19 patients in our hospitals continues to climb. This morning, we are nearing 900. 195 of those patients are in the intensive care unit and 73 are on ventilators. Metro Health also reporting another 4,200 new cases. No new deaths were reported. We spoke with an emergency room doctor from Methodist Hospital who says it's been difficult to tell the difference between COVID-19 and allergies, and that the case numbers may be higher than what we're seeing now. 509, about 44 degrees. And still ahead, how Roku is making it easier for viewers to access live programming. 
And next, what local officials are now saying about the search for three-year-old Lena Kill here in the San Antonio area. And taking a look outside with live cam, another chilly start to your day, but we will see some sunshine today. That is good news. We'll be right back. The search for Lena Kill now on day 24. San Antonio police say they continue to work the case and acknowledge the Amber Alert was discontinued. But they have not said why it was cut short. The Texas Department of Public Safety saying in part, quote, the department discontinues an alert when an agency requests it. We asked the San Antonio Police Department, but have not received an explanation. The three-year-old was last seen on December 20th at a playground at her apartment complex on Fredericksburg Road. If you can help in the case, you're asked to call police. Well, Hamilton fans, including myself, will have to wait considerably longer to see the iconic Broadway show here in the Alamo City. Officials with Majestic Theater are officially announcing that the touring show is rescheduled for the summer of next year. Yeah. So the official new dates are June 20th through July 2nd. Majestic officials say there is nothing those who have a ticket have to do right now. All seats will be honored for the new performance date. The Hamilton tour was rescheduled due to an increase in breakthrough COVID cases among the cast. And there's only one thing I would add to that graphic mm -hmm. to make sure we're clear how far yes. out this year. June 20th through July 2nd, 2023. 2023. I was shocked when I when you told me that yeah. this morning. June or July this year would be doable. Yeah. But I've requested a refund. That's just too far out to yeah, plan ahead. Yeah, you, you just you just don't know. <laughs> Got other stuff to do. Yes. 514, about 44 degrees. And still ahead, how Google Chrome can now identify any song that's being played nearby. And a popular smart speaker can now change the weight on Nordic Tracks adjustable dumbbells. Suggests it was made in Chelsea. It's potentially worth a small fortune. I put in work. Wanna do what I do, better go and put in work. But I look so fresh every time I put in work. I can smell that dough every time I... <gasps> Is that throw? I know, right? It's imported from Portugal. Got it at Marshall's for a total steal. Nice. Thanks. Work. I put in work. New Vicks Vapo Stick. Strong, <sighs> soothing vapors help comfort your loved ones. For chest, neck, and back. It goes on clear, no mess, just soothing comfort. Try new Vicks Vapo Stick. If you're always asking, where next? Capital One has a new class of travel card for you. Venture X. Earn 10X miles on hotels and 5X miles on flights booked through Capital One Travel. Venture X. What's in your wallet? Welcome back on your Wednesday morning. Roku making it easier for viewers to access live programming. ABC's Andrew Dembert has details in today's Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bytes, a big update for Roku. The home screen has a new feature called Live TV Zone, which includes a live channel guide, along with information about other services like YouTube TV, Hulu, and other apps. It can be found under Roku's Live TV tab. You can now identify any song while streaming or browsing without pulling out your phone. Shazam has launched a Chrome extension featuring its music recognition software, and it works even if you're wearing headphones. The extension is free from the Chrome Web Store. And Alexa can help pump you up. The virtual assistant can now adjust the weight on Nordic Track's new adjustable dumbbells, and Alexa can do it while you're working out, meaning you don't even have to stop to change the weight. Uh, hey, Alexa, give me a cheat day. Those are your tech bites. Have a great day. <laughs> There's something to that, though. Well, imagine if Alexa's being mean and she, you're, you're like, you think you're doing 20 pounds and then and you could, you're, all of a sudden you're doing 40 pound exactly. dumbbells. Exactly. I wonder if there's a malfunction. There's too many things that can happen. Just you just drop them. Just get out of the way. <laughs> kind of dangerous. Yeah. 518 right now. <laughs> Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos, who will be working out later today, right? Oh, gee, you're, you're very kind. <laughs> all right. I've only made my way up to the 15 pound dumbbells, so just, you know working my way there slowly but surely, but right now we're going to take it easy. And right now you can take it easy out on the roadways because I 10 at pro bent. We're not looking at a lot of traffic right now. It's been a quiet morning as we are getting Wednesday morning going here. I 35 North at loop 410, but it looks like we are seeing a little bit more activity out there. 35 at walls and however, nothing too drastic. That's going to cause any impacts for that early, early morning drive. So your trip to the coffee store will be a short one. Hopefully as you can take a look right here at the map, we're looking pretty much at a green pinwheel. So 
We want to bring your attention over here to 410 because there is some going to be some construction work or concrete work that will be going on later in the day. Uh, this has been going on since uh, earlier this month, but it's led to a single lane closure on the southbound frontage road at Valley High Drive. Now that will be going on from 1230 in the afternoon to 4 in the afternoon. That should say PM, pardon me, uh, but that will be wrapping up today. So that's some good news there. But overall, the morning started off pretty quiet there. Let's take one last look around town. 281 at Hildebrand. Pe few people out there this morning. We're hoping that it stays quiet, but we know that can quickly change as more people get out on the roadways. Guys. All right. Thank you, Stephen. Mike, uh, I think you would agree that smartphone cameras have gotten so good. They're better at capturing the majesty of Mother Nature and wow. Planet Earth. And, and the nice thing is when I kind of go through all the different pictures that, that come in, there's about three or four of them. I'm going to show them over the course of the morning all different shades of different mm -hmm. colors and just gorgeous, gorgeous pictures. That's beautiful out there. Thank you so much for that. Yes, good morning, Lord. And we got a lot of clouds hanging around here this morning. We will see more sunshine later on today. Temperatures are actually a little bit above normal. We're still in historically the coldest time of the year. Normal high 63, normal low 61, excuse me, 41 and uh, 45 right now. 39 Rio Medina and a pair of 39s out there. Kerrville as well as Comfort. Dry air remains in place even though dew points have come up compared to yesterday still we're I mean the threshold is 60 and we're not going to be anywhere near that which is nice although on the downside is we're not going to get any return of moisture with the next front coming on through here that's going to be able to squeeze out any rain so that's going to be coming in coming through dry as far as the humidity though it does stay on the low side so what this is going to do in the the short term the next couple of mornings like this morning is we'll have cool mornings but then warm up very easily so we're going to be seeing today we make it up into the low 60s normal high temperature, but then it's going to be low 70s the next couple of days. And with those starts in the morning down around the low 40s, we're going to see those 30, almost 35 degree swings in temperature. And that's a good indication that we've got some pretty dry air in place. And that's going to remain the case again through early Friday morning. Uh, computer models do take the clouds and get them on out of here by about early afternoon. It may be a little bit stubborn. We'll have a few leftover high clouds hanging around here and then we'll clear out very nicely. Uh, tonight, so that's going to set us up with the light wind, dry air for the chilly morning tomorrow, and then plenty of sunshine tomorrow. Same thing on uh, Friday, as well as lots of sunshine over the weekend. Here's some of the uh, clouds that are still hanging around here. And again, they will be kind of tough. They are moving on out of here from west to east, and that's how we'll be clearing out later on this morning and early afternoon. And then all the activity remains well up there to the north of us, including pretty cold temperatures. Although, with the exception of Caribou, which is still 11 below zero right now, things are milder, although a good chunk of the country is still below freezing right now. All right, details today. Cloudy skies this morning and then 57 degrees at noon. Most of the cloudy skies will start to see a few more peaks of sunshine, more sunshine off to the west, and then things will continue to clear out from west to east throughout the afternoon. 63 high temperature today, very nice afternoon. Maybe jacket weather, but definitely the next couple of mornings with readings down in the low 40s, but we get up to 73 both tomorrow and Friday. Front comes through here. It's going to be windy on Saturday, and the other downside besides not having any rain is fire conditions may be mm -hmm. uh, getting up there Saturday, especially out to the west with the very dry air coming in here, and a couple of more freezes Sunday morning and Monday morning. Yeah, that sounds like a real threat. Justin was even starting to hint at that for this weekend yesterday morning. Yeah, on Saturday. We're going to be, you know, 35, 40 mile per hour wind gusts. Oh my okay. goodness. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mike. Right now, 523, 44 degrees. And coming up next in your morning spotlight, this year's Oscar show will be the first in four years with a host, plus a look at the Foo Fighters in a new movie. Here are your lottery numbers this morning. Pick three, 172, Fireball 6. Daily four numbers, 3020, Fireball 4. Cash 5, 1, 8, 19, 20, 28. And your Mega Millions. Two, three, 19, 52, 58, Mega Ball 16, Mega Plier 2. Good luck. Entertainment news now, including the Oscars, returning to a regular tradition. Here's CNN's David Daniel with today's Hollywood Minute. 
This year's Academy Awards show will have something it's lacked the last few years, a host. ABC has announced the March 27th ceremony will be the first with a host since 2018, when Jimmy Kimmel took the Oscar stage. No word who this year's host will be. Everything okay? Ever since we moved into this house, my mind is flooded. We all have writer's block. This is not just a creepy rock and roll house. But it allows spiritual entities to cross into our world. Here's a look at the first trailer for Studio 666, about Foo Fighters moving into a spooky mansion to record what could turn out to be their last album. The band plays themselves in the musical horror comedy, which opens in theaters February 25th. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. <laughs> it looks wild. It really does. Yeah, I don't know. It'll be interesting. 527, about 44 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, why the Biden administration is facing growing scrutiny over its handling of the pandemic in the face of record hospitalizations and testing challenges. And you might need a new pet just like this one this morning. We'll check in with our friends over at the Animal Defense League. Making headlines this morning, why the White House is facing new criticism for how it's responding to the latest spike in COVID cases. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, starting your day at 44 degrees. I'm looking forward to hitting the lower 60s, but maybe even tomorrow a little warmer. That'd be nice. Uh, good morning, everybody. It is Wednesday, January 12th. Thanks for joining us. Let's go ahead and check in with Mike about these weather changes for Thursday and Friday. Yeah, we are going to be seeing some warmer temperatures this afternoon. Anything that's warmer than yesterday's upper 40s uh, will be warming up, and that trend is going to continue the next couple of days. Chilly this morning. We are down in the uh, mid 40s and uh, got 45 here in town, 47 Stinson, and pretty consistent all around the area. Thanks to, in part, the, the cloud cover out there. It acts like a blanket on top of us. Mountain cedars, moderate molds on the low side. Both of those numbers dropped significantly from the previous day's reading, and we are going to have some stubborn clouds. There's plenty of clouds out there this morning and I've oh, got the wrong little graphic popping up here. Anyway, we're going to make it up to uh, 63 for a high temperature later on today. Plenty of uh, clouds hanging around here the, in the morning and then we will start to see more sunshine over the next uh, couple of days and that's not going to last all that long because another front's going to move on through here late Friday into Saturday. Cooler temperatures, yes. Big question. Any rain? Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos. What's the latest? The latest is a whole lot of nothing, Mike. As we take a look around town, we are seeing just the same thing we saw of the last half hour of GMSA. A lot of empty roads. You can see I-10 at Days of Vala. A whole lot of nothing that we're spotting from these shots at Trans Guide. Just a few people out there this morning. But of course, although it's looking pretty quiet, make sure that you are driving carefully. We have not spotted any issues just yet. So we're hoping that it can stay that way at least until morning rush when we see a lot more people out there. But right now, things have been shaping up to look pretty quiet. 35 at Walsham is looking a little bit busier, but as you take a look at this shot at I-35 at Alamo, we're seeing a few more people out there, but not a whole lot. So some good news, and that's reflected, as you can see right here on our map. You see right there, 1604, 410. Those corridors are empty right now, and I-10 as well, so we're not spotting any of those delays just yet. And good news, if you're going to be traveling through I-10 from Seguin in those westbound lanes, we got 29 minutes for you to the downtown San Antonio area, 22 minutes right now from 87 and Lavernia in those northbound lanes, 28 minutes coming in from Floridasville. So right now we have been shaping up to see a whole lot of nothing, but a whole lot of nothing is a whole lot of good, especially on a Wednesday morning. We're going to continue to watch these roads closely and talk more construction coming up in the next few minutes. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. San Antonio police asking for the public's help to identify and find a suspect accused of killing a man in the downtown area just last month. Police also continue to look for the person who stabbed a woman to death in 2016. Sarah Costa joins us in the studio with the latest on both of these Crime Stopper cases. Good morning. Good morning, Mark. Good morning, Steph. Now, both these cases remain open as police need the public's help finding these suspects. So let's start with the murder that happened in the heart of downtown, not far from South Alamo Street on December 30th. Officers were called around 1240 in the morning to the 500 block of East Market Street, after receiving word of shots fired, the picture on your screen that you're seeing is the victim, 47-year-old Leo Cameron. Police say he was shot in the upper body and was killed. The suspect then fled toward the river walk and still has not been found. A motive for the shooting is not currently known. Police have not released a description of the suspect. 
Another suspect police need your help finding the person responsible for the 2016 stabbing death of a woman that you see on your screen. Police were dispatched to the 2500 block of Jackson Keller Road around 4 p.m. on December 22nd on 2016. When officers arrived, they found 31-year-old Maria Gabriel Rodriguez. She had been stabbed and was non-responsive in an apartment. Police still do not have any leads in this case and are asking for anyone who knows information to come forward. If you have any information on either of these cases, you are urged to call that number on your screen right now, 210-224-STOP. If your information leads to an arrest, you may be eligible for a $5,000 reward. Mark and Steph. Thank you, Sarah. This morning, the country continues to face more and more cases of COVID-19 and record hospitalizations. At the same time, the Biden administration is facing growing scrutiny over how it's handling the pandemic. CNN's Britt Conway explains. This is not a virus to fool around with. This is like no other respiratory virus. And this variant is like no other. Omicron will ultimately find just about everybody. Most people are going to get COVID. We've seen a nationwide average of more than 754,000 new cases of COVID-19 a day over the past week. Nearly 146,000 people were hospitalized with the virus as of Tuesday. And more than 1,600 people on average have died from it each day in the past week. Many hospitals are juggling staffing issues. States are doing everything from postponing elective surgeries to calling in the National Guard and declaring public health emergencies. And now more children are being hospitalized with COVID-19 than ever before. But the CDC says only about one in six kids age 5 to 11 is fully vaccinated. As schools continue to assess and debate in-person learning, it's back to the classroom in several of the nation's largest school districts. Others have had to go remote amid massive teacher absences. All of this means all eyes are on the White House to turn the tide. Listen to what happened during a hearing on the federal response to Omicron. Do you think anybody has had more influence let, over let our me response finish. to this? You personally attack me. So I assume that that's Senator, not the case. What I assume are you talking about? The you are reviewing. totally incorrect. What a moron. What happens next will mark a pivotal moment for the Biden administration. I'm Britt Conway reporting. In Iowa, a 12 year old girl was killed Monday night after she was hit by a police car. The Iowa State Patrol says a police officer was responding to a fire call when the girl ran into the road. Officials say she later died from her injuries. That accident is now under investigation this morning. President Joe Biden challenging senators to, quote, stand against voter suppression, urging them to change Senate rules in order to pass voting rights legislation that Republicans are blocking from debate and votes. Biden, who has been criticized by some in his own party for the Senate's inaction, declared in a speech in Atlanta that he's, quote, tired of being quiet about the issue. Two voting rights bills are currently stalled and Biden hopes a change in Senate rules could at least free them for votes. Republicans say the bills aren't aimed at fairness, but at giving Democrats election advantages. 537, 44 degrees. And still ahead, why many grocery stores continue to have problems keeping shelves stocked. And outside with live cam, Wednesday morning, waiting on the sun to come up and warm us up after another chilly start to our day. You're watching GMSA. In your morning consumer headlines, empty shelves at grocery stores are becoming more common. Customers across the country saying they're having trouble finding milk, bread, meat, and other essential food items. Grocery stores say worker shortages are causing transportation and logistic issues, which is delaying deliveries. There is also less labor in general. The National Grocers Association says many of its members have less than 50% of their normal workforce. Most recently, weather emergencies, specifically in the Midwest and Northeast, have impacted deliveries and restocking. Kia and Hyundai Auto Sales combined outsold Honda in the United States for the first time ever. According to sales figures supplied by automakers, the brands together ranked fifth in the U.S. sales for 2021. Hyundai and Kia each saw sales increases of about 20 percent. They outsold Honda by more than 130,000 cars, trucks and minivans. Hyundai set for a record for retail sales and excluding sales to fleet customers. For Kia, it was the first time the brand ever sold more than 700,000 vehicles in one year. 
The two Korean automakers are closely related. Hyundai's parent company owns a controlling interest in Kia, and the two companies share a lot of engineering in their vehicles. As for Honda, sales were up just 8% in 2021. Time now, 542 and about 44 degrees out there. Up next, if you're looking for a furry friend to help warm you up during these cold days, Animal Defense League is standing by with some pets that need, or a pet that needs a new home this morning. Well, Michelle is here from the Animal Defense League, and this little kitty, how yes. gorgeous that little guy. What's his name? This is Luca. Um, Luca is two months old, available at our Nacogdoches campus for adoption, as well as a lot of other kitties that are looking for a home. He's so sweet. He came um, actually as a litter of three, mm -hmm. and um, he is still looking for his home right now. And I don't know if you can see it, but his eyes are almost identical color of the orange in his coat. He is definitely unique gorgeous. Yes, indeed he is. So what you got going on? Well, you know, we really just want to thank everyone and again say Happy New Year for 2022. Um, but we had an amazing year in 2021 and we want to thank our community. We're super appreciative. We were actually able to save over 7,000 lives this past year. Wow. Yes. Um, so we're really, really grateful. We're looking forward to 2022 to saving even more. Um, and you know, if you're looking to support, you can adopt, donate, foster, volunteer. We're also hiring too. So, you know, if you're looking to get a, a change of pace for the new year we would love to have you in any form of support okay and don't forget if you want to donate uh, you've got the Amazon we have our Amazon wish, wish list. list yes so a couple it, of clicks mm -hmm. goes right to them exactly what they need and you adopt one you actually save two because you yeah. open up room for another one so more than 7,000 last year and there's still a lot out there to be uh, adopted so head on over to 11300 Nacogdoches uh, or the Paul Jolly Center across from the zoo or you can give them a call at 226-7461 thank you Michelle thank you uh, Luca looks sweet. And Luca will get a loving home. I think so. Uh, time now, 546. Time to check in with Stephen Cavazos. Well, wherever your drive takes you this morning, whether you're heading home or heading to work, uh, you're in some luck because right now the roads have been quiet for the last hour or so, at least throughout GMSA. We've not spotted any big issues. So as you can see right now, it looks like we're seeing a few more people out there from 410 at Bandera, but not a whole lot. I mean, it's only a little bit before 6 a.m. and we don't see typically a lot of folks out there this early in the morning. But if you happen to be heading out on the roadways, this is what you're likely going to expect. Light traffic, US 90 at 36. Very quiet there, though, off 281 South at Loop 410 West, and you can see that's clearly reflected right here on that map. A quiet shot at Trans Guide does show a quiet map that we're looking at, but we are seeing some sort of build up here. Very light, though, uh, in those eastbound lanes of I-10 heading out towards Seguin. We'll find out what's going on there, but we're Wednesday right now, and it's never too early to start thinking about the weekend, and we want to make sure that you are driving carefully, especially this Friday, because we have some high mass illumination that's going to be going on out towards 1604 at I-10. That will lead to the westbound frontage road uh, left lane to be closed from the I-10 intersection to Leon Creek Greenway. Now that's going to be happening this Friday. That's January 14th until Saturday, January 22nd. Uh, now this will be weekdays from 9 in the morning to 4 in the afternoon. So make sure that you're driving carefully, especially with weekend traffic. It can get a little bit hectic out there. But right now things are looking quiet and calm here on the roadways. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. Yeah. Translation, high mass illumination. They're changing the light bulbs on some. Yeah, on, the, on, the, on those big uh, oh, masks. I had to look that up as well because I don't usually use that in my everyday yeah. vocabulary. Yeah. High mass illumination. I like it, though. I mean, it's fancy. I'm going to start saying things like that. So, <laughs> yeah, we'll I feel like, what are you talking about? <laughs> um, okay. Chroma. It, uh, are you trying to think of a fancy name yes. for <laughs> the pretty sunrise? Sun in that picture, so oh, yes. Okay. Some high mass illumination in this picture here. Uh, you can use but, that. Yeah. Thank you. Well, we'll just, that'll just be the, the word of the day. High mass illumination. Okay. So every time we say that, you have another sip of coffee. Um, yeah, another gorgeous picture in those great colors. Thank you so much for the uh, KSAC Connect picture. All right. A lot of clouds out there right now, and temperatures are chilly. Seasonably cold, actually a couple of degrees above normal, 30s and 40s, nothing too bone chilling. We really don't have much of a uh, breeze today, but still have very dry air out there. So we have one of the ingredients in place, but uh, or actually two of the ingredients in place, dry air and no wind, but we've got the cloud cover. So that actually prevented us from dropping down as cool as what we could have gotten. Now that's not going to be the situation uh, the next couple of mornings. We'll be a little bit cooler, not bone chilling. That's going to be coming in here later on in the weekend. Yeah, pretty much everybody well a couple of little 
slight breezes up there around Canyon Lake and New Braunfels. As far as the clouds, they are going to be pretty stubborn throughout the morning hours, and we'll finally start to see the clearing begin about, well, obviously sooner in portions of the hill country, and then that will continue to clear on out throughout the day. We'll have a lot of sunshine today, maybe a few leftover high clouds, and then we'll have clear skies dry air and very light wind overnight. So that's going to allow temperatures to get down closer to 40 tomorrow morning at or even a couple of notches below normal and then plenty of sunshine throughout the day tomorrow and going further into the future. Once again, clouds around here this morning, they clear on out and then we have lots of sunshine for the next couple of days. A couple of clouds here and there fronts going to come through uh, late Friday night, early Saturday. Again, maybe a few clouds here or there. That's pretty much going to be about it. But one thing you don't notice as the front moves on through is any rain around here because we're not going to get the return of moisture, unfortunately. So therefore, this thing's going to be coming through dry. It will be windy on Saturday. And then Sunday morning, we are going to be down close to freezing with the clear skies and dry air, light wind. Same thing on Monday morning. We may have a couple of clouds hanging around here on Monday. But again, this thing uh, just going into this long range computer model for almost the next week. Nothing and looking at another long range computer model. Uh, the first chance of any decent rain as of right now isn't until about next Friday. So what is that? Eight, nine, 10 days from now. 57 degrees at noon, mostly cloudy skies and then a high temperature today up to 63. So we started off a mm, couple of notches above normal thanks to the cloud cover and we end up a lot warmer than yesterday by almost 15 degrees. Yeah, yesterday only the upper 40s. 63 today is normal high and then add to that 73 tomorrow. But again, notice we've got those cold mornings, low 40s up to low 70s, huge warm up thanks to all the dry air in place heats up easily but doesn't hold the heat in very well. Front comes through, keeps us only in the upper 50s on Saturday, windy conditions, and then freezing Sunday and Monday mornings, but then back to about 70 by Tuesday. And we're on alert for potential grass fires, etc., on Saturday. Yeah, because dry air is going to continue to filter on in here, will be in place, and the windy conditions on Saturday. Well, so it sounds like fire crews. High, potential could, high fire danger. Yeah, so it sounds like fire crews could be hustling on Saturday. Very busy. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. 551, about 44 degrees. Let's look at your winning lotto numbers. We have 172, Fireball 6, 3020, Fireball 4. Yeah, that's the daily four. Cash five, numbers 18. 19, 20, 28, and Mega Millions, 2, 3, 19, 52, 58, Mega Ball of 16, a Mega Plier was 2. Good luck. Coming up here on a Wednesday edition of GMA, we start with the COVID surge and the latest on the relentless Omicron fueling another new record. So hospitals are feeling that strain and at home kits are in high demand. We know that, but the FTC now has a warning about fake COVID tests that are being sold online. So this morning, we're gonna tell you what to look out for and how to check that your test is FDA authorized. You'll see that and so much more coming up right here on GMA. Why did dozens of ostriches cross the road? Because a farm worker manning the gate blew it, that's why. 80 ostriches were spotted making a break for it, booking it through the streets of Shangzhou, a city in South China. Local authorities say an employee forgot to lock the gate at a local farm, resulting in the flock's fleet of foot flightless freedom flight. If you aren't aware, ostriches are some of the fastest birds on the planet on foot, capable of sprinting up to 45 miles per hour. But with the help of police, the farmer was able to successfully round up most of the feathered fugitives. Researchers had to go to great lengths to catch a glimpse of an ultra rare, ultra deep sea creature about three and a half miles to the ocean floor, to be exact. To be fair, the crew of the Caledon Oceanic were actually searching for a World War II shipwreck site when they sighted the world's deepest dwelling squid, the Big Fin. Experts say an encounter at such a staggering depth with this fascinating predatory species is significant because it implies that many other life forms must be down there to support it. Finally, there is a foolproof way to keep your animal friends in close proximity, food, glorious food. Alaskan chef Daisy Nicholas gave up the restaurant racket to open an all natural barkery. That's a bakery for dogs. Nicholas uses only locally sourced Alaskan ingredients for her myriad of popular pup products, which feature photos of local satisfied customers right on the labels. For Take a Look at This, I'm Jeremy Roth. 
U.S. Mint plans to roll out a new quarter. Maya Angelou will appear on the coin as first woman in the American Women Quarters program. A legendary poet and activist is one of several prominent women in American history to be featured on the coin. Other uh, quarters in the series will begin rolling out later this year and through 2025. If you're looking for a free COVID test, here's an easy way to find one. Use the camera on your smartphone and scan the code on your screen, that little box. It'll guide you to several sites. More sites are expected to open this week, including one later today at the Yates Community Center. We'll also have the list online on our website at ksat.com. Culinaria's biannual restaurant week set to kick off Saturday gives you a chance to try out some of San Antonio's most popular eateries at a fixed price. If you're interested in trying it out, we have all those details also at ksat.com. Well, coming up in the next half hour, GMSA coronavirus surging in San Antonio. That's why local school districts are laying out their plans to respond to the rise in cases. We've got details. And Transcad right now, I-10 at Day Zavala, sparse traffic there, but a few cars coming right there at the screen at 10 and Frio. There's I-10 at ProBand. We're going to check back in with Stephen Cavazos coming up and another look at your midweek forecast. You're watching GM. A woman is behind bars this morning after two children in her care were found alone and abused. What do we know so far coming up next? New CDC data shows the unvaccinated are 17 times more likely to be hospitalized for COVID. I'm ABC's Faith Abube in Washington. The latest from health officials coming up. And good morning. Taking a look outside with live cam. Very chilly out there. Grab your jacket. But uh, looking forward to Thursday and Friday personally because I want to see the sun. <laughs> live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. You're not alone, Serna. Not at all. Good morning, everybody. It is Wednesday, January 12th. <laughs> Thanks for joining us this morning. Well, at least today we're looking forward to lower 60s. I'll take that over yesterday. Yeah, clouds hung in there yesterday. It was really chilly out there, damp, and we had some wintry precipitation kind of mixed in, but yeah. didn't really amount to much of anything. Yeah, a little sleep made for some, uh, you know, interesting pictures and everything for folks to talk about. But you won't have to wait till tomorrow and, and uh, Friday to see a lot of sunshine. We'll oh, see more okay. later on this afternoon. I'll take that. Yes, clouds are going to be kind of stubborn, though, this morning to uh, clear on out of here. But yes, we'll eventually see some sunshine later on today. And uh, there's those clouds, as you can see, covering most of the area. But there's kind of the the break in the action off there to the west. So and they stick around through about, oh, say noon early afternoon, and then we begin the clearing process, obviously, from west to east. Mountain Cedar, moderate mold is on the low side. Both of those dropped down quite a bit from previous day's reading. Of course, the updated count's going to be coming out in about an hour, hour and a half or so. 45 this morning will stay pretty steady, and we've got some fairly consistent temperatures around the area right now just because of that cloud cover acting sort of like a blanket. Most of the cloudy skies at noon, 57, and then a high temperature today with a bit more sunshine out there and 63, and that's a normal high temperature. And we're starting off just a few degrees above normal. Cool mornings, nice afternoons tomorrow as well as Friday. How about the weekend? We've got another front coming on in here. Details on that in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, you haven't had a lot to talk about so far. Anything big? I've just been enjoying watching the Trans Guide shots right now, Mike. Not a whole lot of activity out there, but 6 a.m. things can quickly change. Let's take a look around town. 37 at Jones Avenue. Not seeing a whole lot of people out there. 1604 at Wiseman. Quiet. So those are the works I've been using throughout the morning. Quiet and again, not a whole lot of folks out there. As reflected here, a 410 at Jackson Keller. However, although we are seeing situations that are quiet, take a look at 410 at Starcrest. These are starting to pop up on uh, some of those issues that we talked about whenever 6 a.m. gets here. That's when we start to see more problems and we're first going to start here with this crash off I-35 southbound at Southwest Military Drive. Uh, I'm trying to see if we can get a shot from with our friends at Transguide. I haven't spotted any flashing lights yet, but be on the lookout for that and that shot from Transguide as you saw from Starcrest. We are seeing a stall there off Loop 410 eastbound again at Starcrest Drive. We're going to continue to watch those situations closely. Right now they're not impacting traffic as you can see from the wider look at our map. We still got a lot of green on the screen, so that's some good news. Looks like we have a second crash that may have popped up near uh, US 90. We'll find out what's going on there. But for now, those inbound times, if you are traveling into the San Antonio area, they're still pretty pleasant, especially from 37 in those northbound lanes. 28 minutes to downtown San Antonio, 18 minutes coming in from Highway 90 in Castorville, and right now a little time from Lytle on 35 northbound with just 16 minutes. So we're looking like we're in good shape there, but we're going to continue to watch these roads closely and see how those incidents are going to impact that morning drive. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen.
New this morning, San Antonio police say a man was killed in a crash on the city's west side early this morning. It happened in the 3500 block of Wiseman just after midnight. Police say a man was driving too fast when he lost control of his vehicle, crashed into a tree and then rolled several times. Police say the driver was ejected as a result and was pronounced dead at the scene. Police are now investigating how he lost control. There are no reports of any other vehicles involved. New this morning, it's a different reality for a woman waking up behind bars and hopefully the first day of a better future for two babies found alone, tied up and abused. We know it was a welfare check made at a southeast side home that led to that disturbing discovery. Our Jonathan Cotto joins us live and Jonathan, do we know if the woman is assuming responsibility in this case? Good morning, Stephanie. And no, she isn't. In fact, she's saying the facts aren't straight in this case. We do know she was taken into custody on two counts of endangering a child. We were able to obtain that woman's mugshot. Let's take a look on your screen. 37-year-old Priscilla Salais. She was arrested by SAPD yesterday after two children in her care were found not only alone, but with visible signs of abuse Sunday afternoon. San Antonio police responded to the home on the city's southeast side and made the alarming discovery at a duplex located on Bailey Avenue. That's near Rigsby after receiving a call from a witness. Now, police say they were able to force their way inside of a bedroom and found a one-year-old baby girl hogtied with a bloody lip and a blackened eye. A two-year-old boy barricaded inside a playpen. Police say both children were heavily soiled. Now, we've been told Salisa's stepdaughter, Isabella, that's her name, entrusted her to care after the kids after they were taken from her by Child Protective Services. This morning, that mom has this message for them. Tell them that I'm sorry. I'm sorry that it got this far and that I should have never trusted anybody with them. And that I just want them to come home already. A CPS representative tells us Elias is not a licensed foster care parent in the state of Texas. The children remain in foster care this morning. Now, there's still a question as to how the children were placed in Elias's uh, care. But, of course, this is a case that we're going to continue to follow closely and update you as more information is made available. Reporting live from Public Safety Headquarters, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. All right. Thank you, Jonathan. New details this morning following a massive apartment fire that left 38 children and 31 adults out of their homes. It happened at the Wurzbach Manor Apartments. Sarah Costa is following this story closely and she joins us live in the newsroom. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Stephanie. Yeah, right now it's still unclear what sparked the fire. We do know the Red Cross is helping those impacted. Many are refugees. The Red Cross provided vouchers for all 14 families. They also provided medicine for those who lost that in the fire and they provided referrals to other agencies that can help victims in the next coming days. Mental health counselors are also available to those who need it. Now, KSAT did reach out to the San Antonio Center for Refugee Services. They say they were not aware of the fire, but would investigate how they can help those families that are impacted. Now, if you would like to help the Red Cross, we do have a link to donate on our website. You can specify you want the funds to go towards the Warsbach Manor fire victims. Just look for the story on our homepage. Mark and Steph. Thank you, Sarah. The number of local COVID patients in hospitals continues to climb. This morning, we're nearing 900. 195 of those are in intensive care. 73 are on ventilators. Metro Health also reporting another 4,200 new cases. No new deaths are being reported. We spoke with an emergency room doctor for Methodist Hospital who says it's been difficult to tell the difference between COVID-19 and allergies and the case numbers may be higher than what we're seeing now. Across the nation, governors in multiple states are issuing emergency declarations as the Omicron variant depletes vital health care resources. The CDC says the variant now makes up 98% of all new cases and new numbers accounting for the weekend backlog show the U.S. tallied a record 1.4 million cases in a single day. ABC's Faith Abube has the latest. Good morning. Among the infected, health officials say the unvaccinated are 17 times more likely to be hospitalized. A six-fold increase in U.S. COVID cases in just the last month, driven by the Omicron variant means across the country, hospital beds are at a premium. 
In Minnesota, an urgent situation inside the Mercy Hospital emergency room. The healthcare system is absolutely buckling right now. Virginia issuing a 30 day state of emergency to help healthcare facilities increase bed space and staff. Maryland, Maine, and Massachusetts all leaning on the National Guard as a record number of COVID patients flood U.S. hospitals. Even though they say Omicron is probably more mild. Uh, I don't think we're necessarily seeing that with the unvaccinated. New data from the CDC shows the unvaccinated 17 times more likely to be hospitalized and 20 times more likely to die from COVID. This is an extraordinary virus, the likes of which we have not seen even close to in well over 100 years. Across the country, Americans desperately trying to find COVID tests, some forming long lines in frigid temperatures. But this morning, glimmers of hope in New York. The cases are slowing down. The rate of increase is slowing down. And as for those at-home COVID tests, the Biden administration promised. Officials say the first round will start going out at the end of the month, with the remaining tests going out over the next 60 days. In Washington, Faith Abube, ABC News. In your morning consumer news, along with higher prices, food shoppers are seeing some empty shelf shortages and have gotten worse in the last few weeks, affecting everything from meat and vegetables to packaged goods. Experts say several factors are at work, from severe weather and labor issues to higher demand at grocery stores since people continue to eat more at home. U.S. antitrust officials can continue their effort to break up Meta, the parent company of Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp. Federal prosecutors say that Meta has illegally become a monopoly in the social media market and that Instagram and WhatsApp should be spun off. On Tuesday, a federal judge rejected Meta's request to dismiss the Federal Trade Commission's complaint. It's a huge blow to the social media giant that could potentially end with some of Meta's most valuable assets being sold off. In a statement, Meta said it was confident the evidence will reveal the fundamental weakness of the claims. The FTC did not immediately respond for a, to a request for a comment. A new episode of Case Out Explained is streaming right now. This week, the team is tackling a highly politicized issue, immigration, specifically what it means to seek asylum in the U.S. Team also breaks down something known as Title 42, a little known provision in federal law that's further complicated just about everything. Case Out Explained Seeking Asylum is available to stream right now. You can watch it at caseout.com slash explains. 611 about 44 degrees and still ahead on GMSA. It's being called a miracle. The story of a helicopter crash in Philadelphia. Everyone on board survived outside with live cam waiting on the sun to come up and warm us up. Mike says that will happen. We'll have details coming up. And welcome back at 614. Now to the helicopter crash near Philadelphia. The pilot was able to make what's being described as a miracle landing near a church. And look what's left of this. Inside that chopper, an infant girl. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has more. This morning, new video showing the moment everyone on board this helicopter miraculously survived a crash in Pennsylvania. The pilot was able to navigate a web of power lines, homes and buildings, eventually going down on the steps of a church in suburban Philadelphia. The four people on board all escaped without any life-threatening injuries, including a two-month-old patient seen here being carried from the wreckage. So they were like, here, 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 take this to my Lyft driver, and it was a baby. Emma Gray ran toward the wreckage to help after hearing the crash. We look over to the church, and there was... <laughs> There was a helicopter. Part of it was on fire. It was spewing jet fuel. It's unclear why the helicopter went down. Witnesses say it appeared the pilot was looking for a place to land, flying low in distress before hitting the ground. The noise was so loud and different from anything I've ever heard. I thought it was a bomb. I really did. This morning, authorities are praising the pilot for avoiding what could have been a catastrophic crash. It's an absolute miracle here, what you see behind you, how this, and there's no debris, no wires down, no trees, how that pilot was able to get that plane there. Can't wait to meet this gentleman and shake his hand for getting this plane down, the, the helicopter the way he did. The two-month-old girl was a patient flying to a local hospital from Maryland. The cause of the crash is still under investigation. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. Time check, 616.
a lot more vehicles on the roadways. Let's go ahead and check back with Stephen Cavazos. It is getting a little bit busier out there. As we take a look at Trans Guide, Mark and Stephanie, you can see that some of these shots, they don't look quite busy, but other shots, we are seeing a lot more activity out there. For instance, here we have I-10 at Frio, very quiet here at this hour. But as we take a look at I-10 at Probant, it looks like we have a few more folks there. So make sure that you're driving carefully now that we are in the 6 a.m. hour and each minute inching closer to morning rush hour. We know that issues can start to present themselves Let's go ahead and take you to the map because uh, we still have that crash that was detected right here off I-35 southbound at Southwest Military Drive. Now, it looks like that icon that we showed you earlier just cleared from our map, so that should be some good news. We'll continue to watch that area and make sure that there's no congestion, uh, especially if you're going to be driving out of the San Antonio area uh, later this morning. But let's take your attention up here to 410 because we did have a stall still out there at Starcrest Drive right in those eastbound lanes. So make sure that you drive carefully when you see those flashing lights move over or slow down. But as we push out and show you the wider look at the map. We're still seeing a lot of green on the screen. Really good news, especially if you have to head out the door in the next few moments. But one last look at trans guide. Make sure you're driving carefully. It looks like we got a lot more people out there from these shots that we're seeing. Sure Guys, do. you know you. that that helicopter crash reminds me of the uh, SAPD chopper that had to make the emergency landing a few years ago. And mm -hmm. remember the video from inside and the pilot yeah, was coming yelling out. flare flare. Yeah, yeah wow. and, and had to, to um, avoid the power lines, right? And I believe that yeah. chopper didn't that chopper stay upright. This one wound up on its side. Yeah. I, I believe the SAPD Eagle chopper wound up upright in a, in a grocery store parking lot. If I recall, did a fantastic mm -hmm. job. Yep. Yeah, so. All right. Uh, it's cool this morning. Grab a jacket, warm up the car, warm up the bus a little bit. Temperatures will stay fairly steady where they are right now in the mid 40s. We're about to four degrees above normal. Lots of clouds out there. Clouds are going to be kind of stubborn to get out of here. Probably early afternoon we'll start to see more sunshine, obviously more out to the west, and uh, least temperatures are going to be getting up to uh, about a normal reading, a whole lot better than yesterday's upper 40s. We'll make it up to 63 later on today. Not much of a breeze. We don't have much of a breeze out there. Love this picture. Not only the uh, colors in the sky, but of course, Good morning, America. Oh, red, white, and blue flying there. Thank you very much for the, uh, the KSAC Connect shot. And uh, yeah, plenty of clouds showing up right now. No other uh, issues. We've got very dry air. We don't have any fog, anything like that to deal with. Wind chills really aren't a factor with no wind out there. 37 Comfort, Bernie Stage, 45 in town. Same thing over there at Randolph and 41 right now in Hondo. And yeah, a puff of a breeze out there. So, Again, not really anything to, uh, to write home about. And wind is not going to be an issue until we get in toward the weekend. More on that coming up. So here's the uh, computer model. And this one has a lot of the clouds, at least in the western half of our area, clearing on out by uh, just after lunchtime or right around lunchtime, early afternoon. Some may linger a little bit longer than that. And then we'll see begin to end up the day more sunshine around here and get that helps to warm us up clear skies overnight and we keep a lot of clear skies around the next couple of days. We're going to have some cool mornings and then even warmer afternoons. So we get up to normal today, but then at about 10 to that, we'll make it up into the low 70s tomorrow. So here's what's going on with the upper level steering winds. All of the the jet stream, the main flow in the atmosphere, if you will. This is keeping all of the activity and all the really, really cold air up to the north of us. We do have this sort of modified northwesterly flow that is helping to, to keep the humidity at bay. Yes, good news. We're not seeing a huge return in the humidity like we have in past couple of weeks after we've had a little cold snap and all of a sudden the humidity returns. But bad news is with the next front coming on through here, there's no moisture to squeeze out. So we don't have any rain, unfortunately, in store. We get this front moving through late Friday into Saturday. That low stays too far to the north to really do anything around here. Maybe a couple of clouds. Very windy on Saturday. And then cooler temperatures for the, uh, the rest of the weekend. We'll stay on the cool side Saturday afternoon, but then Sunday morning as well as Monday morning, we are going to be getting down to freezing again. 57 today at noon. Still plenty of clouds hanging around here. More sunshine off in portions of the hill country. And then more sunshine later on on today 63 for a high temperature tomorrow and really every morning this week chilly temperatures down right around 40 or so and we'll make it up into the low 70s big big warm up good indication of some pretty dry air in place front comes through late friday saturday so a milder start on saturday but then we stay only in the upper 50s and freezing sunday morning up to 60 freezing again monday morning <laughs> yo yo forecast continues mm -hmm. and Downside, though, not a drop of rain. Mm. But we'll be prepared for everything else. Right. Thank you, Mike.
Be extra careful Saturday with those high winds and any mm -hmm. flame. 621, about 44 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, we'll get you ready for Wild Card Weekend in the NFL. We're going to tell you how to how Cowboys are going to compare to one of their old rivals. They're going to face one of their old rivals. What can I do with less asthma? With Dupixent, I can do more beginner's yoga. Namaste. Namaste. Surprise parties. Aw, you guys. Dupixent helps prevent asthma attacks. A three! So I can do more of the things I love. <laughs> Dupixent is not for sudden breathing problems. It's an add-on treatment for specific types of moderate to severe asthma that can improve lung function for better breathing in as little as two weeks and can reduce or even eliminate oral steroids. And here's something important. Dupixent can cause serious allergic reactions, including anaphylaxis. Get help right away if you have rash, shortness of breath, chest pain, tingling, or numbness in your limbs. Tell your doctor if you have a parasitic infection and don't change or stop your asthma treatments, including steroids, without talking to your doctor. Are you ready to do more with less asthma? Just ask your asthma specialist about Dupixent. Our San Antonio Spurs back home following their worst road trip of the season, going one and six. Silver and Black will take on the struggling Houston Rockets at 730 tonight over at the AT&T Center. Then Cleveland comes to town on Friday, followed by the Clippers on Saturday and Phoenix on Monday. The Spurs will be home next week as well. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. Cowboys going into wild card weekend as three point favorites against the visiting San Francisco 49ers. Cowboys finished the season as the third seed team. Niners are the sixth seed. Kickoff 3.30 Sunday afternoon at AT&T Stadium in Arlington. Winner moves on. Loser goes home. So my husband, of course, will be cheering for the Cowboys, but the rest of his family will be cheering for the 49ers. Oh, wow. Interesting weekend. A family house divided. E very much so. <laughs> we will see what happens. Time now, 625 and 44 degrees for now. Still ahead on GMSA, we'll tell you why horrific, horrific rather, youth hockey accident could lead to more protective gear used in that sport. And a quick check of the roads with Transguide. Uh, there are a lot of vehicles there at I-35 and Loop 410. Uh, not so much there at I-10 and Frio. We'll be checking in with Stephen Cavazos very soon. An on-the-job accident at a food processing plant sends a woman to the hospital, but that's only after firefighters take on the task of setting her free. I'm Katrina Weber. I'll have that story. Well, after a chilly Tuesday, even in the afternoon, what is on tap for your Wednesday? Mike is standing by to our right with answers. Good morning, everybody. It is Wednesday, the 12th. Happy Wednesday. Thanks for joining us. And I know during the school year, usually I will send my daughter off to school wearing a jacket. And by the afternoon, she has it in her backpack. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, wore it all day. Yeah, it yeah. makes total sense. What about today, Mike Oster? Hey, do we warm up at all later on? Oh yeah, we're gonna warm up up to a normal high temperature, right around low 60s. So kind of like a maybe jacket, maybe not. You know, it's not gonna be too cold, not too hot. Um, at least your daughter does put it in the backpack though. Yes. So you don't have to go to lost and found. That's always good news. We got lots of clouds hanging around here this morning and temperature is on the well, mild side. We're about four degrees above normal. Still have very, very dry air and light wind. We've had almost no wind all morning long. So we had two of the three ingredients in place to really get cold this morning, but it was the cloud cover that actually kept temperatures up a little bit from uh, getting as cold as what they could have gotten. 37 comfort burning stage 45 Randolph and uh, well, let's see. We were sitting at 50 at Stinson's now down to uh, 48 degrees. Mountain Cedar moderate mold low. Both of those numbers dropped down a whole bunch from the previous day's readings. So cloudy chilly this morning and uh, then need a jacket throughout a good portion portion of the day and then low 60s later on and we're going to have more sunshine later on this afternoon as well but it's going to be the clouds going to be fairly stubborn I think they hang in here till at least uh, noon early afternoon they'll clear out from west to east and still some leftover clouds off to the east late this afternoon and then the rest of the week tomorrow and Friday lots of sunshine cool mornings down around 40 we get up into the low 70s so that's a good indication we've got some low humidity hanging around here there is another front that's going to move through then overnight Friday into Saturday we'll have more sunshine over the weekend still but it will be much colder we'll stay only in the 50s on Saturday and then we're looking at a couple of more uh, freezing mornings by Sunday and Monday 
any rain to be squeezed out. Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos. Still no problem? I th I'd say it's been like this, kind of like, Mike. You know, we see some issues out there, uh, but right now we have the early birds that are out and getting their morning started. You can see right now just a few folks out there from these shots, but right now we're seeing a lot more activity off 37 at Jones Avenue. Again, those early birds are out and getting their morning started, so just make sure that you're driving carefully. Right now, I'd say the trip to work or maybe the trip home, if you are an overnight person, uh, it should be comfortable. We're not seeing any issues. We spotted them earlier. Thankfully, those have cleared out. As you can see, based on our map, we're looking at a lot of green, so that's some great news. But now we are getting closer to that morning rush hour. We're going to start seeing some of those issues popping up. That's always expected. So you got to make sure that you're taking it easy out on the roadways, especially when things are very quiet right now. There's no need to rush to work or rush to get home. Make sure that you're driving carefully. As you can see right now, even if your travels take you through San Antonio from any of these neighboring communities, you're in good shape. No delays just yet. But again, the morning is quiet right now with morning rush here. That can quickly change. We're going to continue to keep our eyes on the road, but as always, keep your eyes on the road as well. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, an accident at a food processing plant has sent a worker to the hospital. San Antonio firefighters say they had to free her from a piece of equipment inside the plant. That plant located in the 1800 block of Jackson Keller near West Avenue. Katrina Weber is there with the live report. Katrina, how serious were her injuries? Well, firefighters told us that fortunately she was not badly hurt, no life threatening injuries, but that woman was taken to a hospital for evaluation. Now, those San Antonio firefighters rushed onto the property at Andy Garcia Foods around 4.30 this morning for what initially was called an industrial accident. They say a worker who was cleaning a piece of machinery somehow got caught in it and became lodged in it. Firefighters were having a tough time trying to free her. They eventually had to take part of the machine off in order to get her out. Now, firefighters did uh, manage to d get her out, and they described that piece of equipment as a chopper mixer. Now, according to its website, Garcia Foods makes chorizo and barbacoa, among other items, at this processing plant. Again, the worker who was hurt here was not seriously hurt. Firefighters say no life-threatening injuries. Reporting live on the north side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. New this morning, we now know the name of the second teen who died this weekend in a crash near Johnson High School. He is 16-year-old Gabriel Guadiz. Guadiz, along with 17-year-old Ziv Hud Hudani, were both killed Saturday after investigators say they crashed into a driver on Bulverde Road near the entrance of Johnson High School. The collision caused both vehicles to burst into flames. A woman and her daughter in the other car were injured and taken to the hospital. The crash is still being investigated. We also know the name of a man killed last week crossing Culebra at 410 on the west side. He's 34 year old Joseph Tadus. Police say he was struck by two vehicles and died there at the scene. The drivers of the vehicles did stop to help and are not facing charges. Seven of the city's 16 school districts, including two city, the city's largest, have laid out COVID-19 policies. Each has in effect as students, teachers and staff who'd fallen ill prepare to return to campus. Sarah Costa is live in the newsroom with what parents need to know about COVID-19 protocols for area districts. Good morning. Good morning, Mark. Good morning, Stephanie. Now it can get confusing concerning some districts follow CDC guidelines while others rely on the Texas Education Agency regarding how long the quarantine period should be. So let's start with San Antonio ISD. They are following CDC guidelines. People with COVID-19 should isolate for five days. And if they are asymptomatic or their symptoms are resolving, that means without fever for 24 hours, you no longer have to isolate, but the CDC says to follow that five days of wearing a mask when around others. A negative test is not required after that five day isolation. Northeast ISD is doing diff things a little different. If a student tests positive for COVID-19, they will isolate at home for five days after the day or after the day symptoms began or after they test positive. If a student has isolated for five days and no longer has symptoms, they don't need a test to return. If they wish to return earlier than that five day period, they do need a negative test. If a student is still experiencing symptoms after five days, any ISD is asking for students to stay at home until they have been without a fever for 24 hours. Southside ISD is following TEA guidelines. If a student tests positive, they must stay home for 10 days. A negative test is not required when symptoms improve to return. If symptomatic after 10 days and results are negative with a rapid test, the district is requiring students to stay home until a follow-up 
PCR test confirms test results. Again, this is a lot of information. If you just head to KSAT.com, we have all this on our homepage, along with several more districts COVID-19 protocols. Mark and Steph. Thank you, Sarah. Hamilton fans will have to wait a little longer to see the iconic Broadway show in the Alamo City. The tour was rescheduled due to an increase in breakthrough COVID cases among the cast. The official new dates are June 20th through July 2nd. That's 2023. That's right. Next summer, not this summer. So Majestic officials say if you already have tickets, you don't have to do anything right now. All seats will be honored for the new performance date. Police are asking for help finding an 87 year old man last seen January 1st. Harold Hote, known as, also known as Harry, last seen in the 18,000 block of 2nd Street, which is north of I-35. Investigators say he is bald. He usually wears glasses and has a scar on his hand. If you have any information that can help find him, call 207-7660. And right now, San Antonio police and Crime Stoppers are hoping you can help them track down the suspects in two separate murder cases. First, a murder that happened in the heart of downtown. Police say back on December 30th, officers called around 1240 to the 500 block of East Market after receiving word of shots fired. The victim, 40-year-old Leo Cameron, was shot and killed. Suspect took off towards the Riverwalk and has still not been found. Police are also searching for the suspect involved in the 2016 stabbing death of 31-year-old Maria Gabriela Rodriguez. Officers found her dead in an apartment on Jackson Keller Road. You can call Crime Stoppers if you have any information about either of these cases. That number on your screen, 210-224-STOP. Now to the track. This morning, a new push to protect hockey players after the tragic death of a Connecticut teenager. Neck guards like these are selling out after Teddy Balkand, a 10th grader, died last week. He fell during a junior varsity game, and a player from the opposing team was unable to stop in time, slashing Teddy's neck with his skate. He always put others before him. Now, Teddy's friend has started an online petition for USA Hockey to require neck laceration protection. I'm not saying a neck guard would have saved his life. It just it feels like it could have been an avoidable accident. Some leagues require neck guards, but others, including the one Teddy played in, only suggest players wear them. My nine year old started wearing one this weekend for sure. He's fighting me on it, but uh, yeah, he he started wearing it. Many coaches acknowledge injuries like the one Teddy suffered are extremely rare, but welcome the safety precautions. If they are uncomfortable or, or not convenient for players to wear, how can we redesign them so that, you know, they're more likely to be worn? As Teddy's team mourns his loss, they're paying tribute to their friend. The Teddy And players from across the country are now leaving their equipment outside as the hashtag sticks out for Teddy gains momentum. More than 58,000 people have already signed the change.org petition to require neck laceration protection. Andrea Fuji, ABC News, New York. 639, about 44 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, if you have some rotten fruit that you're trying to get rid of, don't throw it out just yet. We're going to tell you how you can still get some use out of it right after the break. According to a new survey, the average American wastes at least $10 a week throwing out bad fruit. That's $520 a year if you add that up. And that's why we want to tell you about some ways you can maximize the life of your fruit. So first, bananas containing moisturizing vitamin E, which can be great for brightening and softening your skin. So you cut a banana peel down to fit underneath your eyes, leave it there for 15 to 30 minutes and remove the residue with your regular cleanser. This will remove under eye puffiness and you can also soothe bug bites by rubbing the inside of the peel on the swollen area and rub them on the leaves of your indoor plants to make them shine. Well, how about that? Raisin water can be used to flush out toxins from your system. It's made by soaking raisins overnight and then straining the liquid to boil. You can also remove a deep splinter by placing a raisin on the area overnight. These salicylates in raisins bring the splinter to the surface of the skin, making it easier to pull it out. And some other notable mentions, berries can be frozen in an ice cube tray to make flavored water or wine friendly ice. You can also add citrus peels to a hot bath, making it fragrant and more 
relaxing. Let us know how that works out right now. 644, about 44 <laughs> degrees. Let's check in with Stephen Cavazos right now. I've done the berry one. It works out great. You can fr you know, freeze grapes as well, and yeah. they're a great snack. I've, Frozen I've grapes are awesome. I want to try the banana peel yeah, Mike's for, 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 under the for the yeah, dry think, puffiness. Yeah. yeah, but everyone's eyes look great right now. I've heard, well, <laughs> thanks to the chemicals, but um, <laughs> I've heard you can use uh, banana peels to shine your shoes, too. Oh, I'll oh. try that later. Never done it, but... I'll try that later, Mike, and I'll let you know how it goes. Uh, well, right now, traffic is going, looking pretty good right now. So you can see 410 at Jackson Keller. I'd say it's been an unusual morning because right now we're at morning rush and we've not spotted any issues, but listen, that's not a bad thing, especially for anybody that has to get their morning started early, head to work or head home. 410 at Bandera doesn't look busy out there, but 281 at Hildebrand does look a little bit busier and the morning is getting going, but watch out here because we do have a stall off I-10 westbound at Fair Oaks Parkway. That's not caused issues just yet, but things can change with morning rush here. Uh, taking a wider look at the map as we push it out, we can see just some minor slowdowns along 1604 that's out toward Converse, but nothing really drastic right now, so you're in good shape if you have to head out the door in the next few moments. It's a comfortable drive. I'd say just take it easy out on the roads. We're going to continue to watch them closely here. But yeah, very unusual morning without any issues. If you shine your shoes with bananas, don't go to the zoo. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's that words, words be, of wisdom. Might be a problem. <laughs> take my word. No, I'm kidding. Anyway, uh, another fantastic picture, Mr. McClellan. And yeah, 30 second window to uh, to get that one. Boy, it's a wow. gorgeous shot. Thank you very much for that. Yeah, we had some beautiful, beautiful pictures uh, this morning. This one's not so pretty. Lots of clouds, no indications of the sunrise and 45 degrees here in town. 36 Bernie stage pair of 37s Kerrville and Comfort 48 Stinson. Temperatures are actually here in town just a few degrees above normal, which is 41 right now. Not much of a breeze out there, so we've had dry air. We've had uh, light wind, but we've had a lot of clouds hanging around here, and so that's what prevented temperature from getting as cold as what they could have gotten. Here's water vapor imagery and yeah, a lot of moisture in the mid upper levels of the atmosphere, but it starts to dry out a little bit and this drier air is going to continue to work its way in here, but it'll take at least through about early um, early noon or early day afternoon, I should say just afternoon time. So we'll still have some of these leftover clouds clearing off to the west by noon and then more sunshine later on this afternoon and that's going to help temperatures to get back up to normal readings in the low 60s then we'll have clear skies overnight and that will allow things to drop down to about 40 tomorrow morning same thing roughly on friday but then huge warm-up throughout the day both days will gain a good 30 almost 35 degrees each and every day thanks to the dry air in place. Here's the uh, satellite picture and there's those low clouds that are hanging around covering most of the area right now. Again, they eventually clear out later on this afternoon. Otherwise, all the activity is still way up there to the north and got some snow in the higher elevations up there in the Rockies and all these systems are scooting across almost straight west to east. So that keeps all the really, really cold air up there to the north, even though we will get another front moving through here Friday into Saturday. And yes, we will be looking at another freeze uh, for a couple of mornings, Sunday morning and Monday morning. But all the, like I said, the really cold stuff and all the activity as far as any rainmakers that stays up to the north of us. We don't have any rain in the forecast, unfortunately. 57 degrees today at noon, mostly cloudy skies. High temperature makes it up to 63. That is normal this time of year. And then tomorrow, we are going to be dropping down to 40, about the normal low temperature. Same thing on Friday morning, then a huge warm up, 73 both days. Again, that's uh, really thanks in part to the dry air, which doesn't hold the heat in very well, but then heats up quite easily. Front comes through Friday night into Saturday. And that's going to knock temperatures down. Keeps them only in the upper 50s on Saturday. A couple of clouds around here, plenty of sunshine. Then we'll get much colder, freezing Sunday morning, freezing Monday morning, up into the uh, low 60s. And then 70 once again by Tuesday. No rain. Maybe not till uh, right now, some of the long range computer models don't have anything decent around here until late next week. Which will make for kind of a scary Saturday. Yeah, because of the fire danger because of the windy conditions on Saturday, so especially out to the west. Be extra aware, folks, if you can. 649, about 44 degrees. And a lot of people's favorite foods contain a lot of salt, but too much sodium can be hard on your health. Tomorrow on GMSA, we're going to tell you which of your snacks are sneaking in salt.
I joke sometimes that I add salt to salt. <laughs> I'm the same way. I'm yeah, terrible. <laughs> especially that sweet and salty mix. 649, we said 44 degrees right now. Lots and lots of traffic there at 10 and 410. We'll chip back in with Stephen. Come up as we wrap up GMSA. Before she could punch out, a worker had to be pulled out of a piece of equipment at this food processing plant. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. San Antonio firefighters came to her rescue overnight when they rushed onto the property of Andy Garcia Foods here in the 1800 block of Jackson Keller around 4.30 this morning. They say they found a woman trapped in a piece of equipment. The firefighters told us she was cleaning that machine when she got caught up in it. They ended up removing part of the machine in order to free her from it. Firefighters say fortunately she didn't suffer any major life-threatening injuries, but she was taken to a hospital for evaluation. According to its website, Garcia Foods makes chorizo and barbacoa inside this plant. Firefighters say that the woman was caught up in a machinery that they described as a chopper mixer. Reporting from the north side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Alone, tied up, and abused, those are the conditions San Antonio police found two babies in after they made a disturbing discovery at a home on the city's southeast side. Good morning. I'm Jonathan Cotto. We know the woman involved in this case has been taken into custody on two counts of endangering a child. This is the mugshot we received this morning of 37-year-old Priscilla Salais, who was arrested by SAPD yesterday after two children in her care were found not only alone, but with visible signs of abuse Sunday afternoon. San Antonio police responded to the home on the city's southeast side and made the alarming discovery at a duplex located on Bailey Avenue near Rigsby after receiving a call from a witness. Police say they were able to force their way inside of a bedroom and found a one-year-old baby girl hogtied with a bloody lip and a blackened eye. A two-year-old boy barricaded inside a playpen. Police say both children were heavily soiled. Now, both children remain in foster care this morning. A CPS representative tells us Elias is not a licensed foster parent in the state of Texas. Now, there's still the question as to how the children were in Elias's care. And of course, this is a case that we're going to continue to follow closely and bring you the latest as more information is made available. Reporting, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. And make sure to join us on GMSA at 9 this morning. We have a packed show, including Katie's Science Lab. Katie and David are at Vera Mendy Elementary, visiting Mrs. Hamilton's fifth grade class. Their exper experiment is a secret, so make sure to watch and find out what they're doing on GMSA at 9+. Plus. Max Massey will be live at the zoo and introduce us to a Komodo dragon with some arthritic issues. How the zoo is using medical te techniques usually used for dogs to make that 27-year-old dragon feel better. And one area school district partnering with the city of San Antonio to make sure every student has access to internet. Tiffany Huertas explains why cell phone towers are crucial to this project that's still ahead on GMSA at 9. Here's traffic and weather at 5 till 7. A lot going on at 9 and right now roads have been looking good. Expect a comfortable commute. Just watch out because we do have a stall off of, uh, pardon me, we have a stall right here. 281 northbound at St. Mary Street not causing any issues. Wider look at the map does show we're still off to a good start. Just make sure to take it easy out there, Mike. Plenty of clouds and maybe a, a hole or two won't see a whole a lot of sunshine until later on this afternoon. Still 45 degrees and 30s in the hill country, and we are going to make it up to 63. More sunshine later on today, and very warm the next couple of days up in the low 70s. Another front comes through for the weekend. All right, we'll mention it again later, but we have to mention now happy birthday to our very own David Sear. Oh, happy yeah, birthday, happy David. Happy birthday, David. Can't wait, to, can't wait to tell him again at 9, and go ahead and stick around, and we'll see you back here at 9. Good Morning America is next.